Welcome back. A story today in the New York Times saying Google is reportedly testing an AI tool to produce, yes, news stories. And they're pitching the service to the Times, the Washington Post, News Corp, and other outlets as a way to help journalists. Yesterday, we got the AI story about Apple. Earlier in the week, it was Microsoft. Let's talk about it all in today's Tech Check with our own Steve Kovac. Steve, welcome. Hey. We highlighted that Google has kind of been left out of the rally, at least in the past week or so. I don't know if this move is the kind of thing that would uh, get investors excited. Not necessarily, but if you just go back to, I think it was last week, they announced they put uh, Bard, their chatbot, in a few more countries and uh, some new capabilities. That set shares up like 4% despite no monetization plans for this. This one's interesting, though. This is something um, people in our industry have been, dear. we have a job still for now, Kelly, but the idea here is, and look, I asked Google about it because worried for my own employment here, I was like, what, what is really going on? Google tells me, a spokesperson tells me, look, this is not meant to replace journalists or the reporting they do. Like we hear so often from these companies making these AI tools, this is to augment, to help you, to make you more productive, come up with different ways to write headlines, get more creative, just like you would in a real newsroom trying to you know, talk to your colleagues, bounce ideas off like we do here <laughs> every day at CNBC. I think that's how they're trying to pitch it. But look, th there are plenty of other news organizations using AI just to straight up write news articles. BuzzFeed is, is experimenting with it. Uh, former uh, Gawker Media, now called Geo Media, they're doing it as well. So it's, it is happening on the more extreme level, too. And I think it's been happening in sports for a long time. You know, the idea that certain things can be kind of automated if you take a box score. Oh, of course. You know, I, I can even imagine, honestly, if you want a stock market write up, all you need to know is was it up? For if you want literally a three sentence description, right. okay, you can do that. I don't really understand what the tools are helping people. Let's <laughs> listen. Us journalists don't necessarily have to be that creative. It's kind of about, hey, here are the this facts. This thing just happened. Let's yes. stack them together. There's layers of editors and you know headline writers and things like that. So it's it's still a little hazy to me what exactly they're trying to do. Here. Right. And 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 look, you know, there's there's always these people. Uh, this idea of people using this technology. I'll go back to what IBM CEO Arvind Krishna said earlier this year, basically saying the quiet part out loud, we can replace 7,800 jobs with artificial intelligence. New York Times also had a really great story earlier this week about an AT&T call center employee who feels like she's training her own AI absolutely. replacement. Absolutely, and there, and there is absolutely one of the first places it's really going to oh, replace easily. jobs. That is, that is number one. And look, Google has demonstrated software before we even started talking about chatbots and, and, and the like. Google has demonstrated software that can replace that, that you can use to make a, a restaurant reservation, for example. So it, it's already being done. And look, it's up to companies to whether or not these News Corp and all these other uh, journalism companies that are, are experimenting with it, whether or not they actually want to do it or not. Let me put it this way. I'm hearing from big time investors who think Microsoft's $30 per head to use the tool is going to have literally hundreds of millions of users within like a year. You know, yeah. th th this isn't hype. They say like, this is for real. 30 bucks a head, you won't be able to on survive the On top of the, the 36 they're already paying. On top of the 36. Yeah. You look at what Google's doing though, and is there, do you see dollar signs? Right? Not I mean, yet. Th th and I think that explains the gap in, in the share behavior. Oh, it absolutely bit. does. And look, this has been the story all year that Microsoft has been ahead of Google, both product wise and coming up with monetization plans. But I I'll quote our uh, contributor, Alex Kantowitz, who was on uh, earlier this week talking about this. It doesn't mean Google's out of the game yet, and it's not going to just, you know, things aren't going to run out of time by the end of this year or the end of next year. Google has plenty of runway, there's plenty of room for growth. Google has a huge uh, footprint uh, with their apps and services in education, especially. There's a lot of, you know, wrinkles there as well. But so it, it's not over. It's not just because Microsoft is ahead, game over. There, right. There's room for plenty of players. Yeah, maybe they should go the same route and say, you know, you want Google Docs with AI or whatever. Right. You know, that's $30 a month. Now, you Google want... will do it cheaper. Keep in mind, they're an advertising company, not for a software company necessarily for now. for now. She says for now. <laughs> Steve, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Our Steve Kovac.